Hi, I'm Emily Watkins, and this is the WBFO Disabilities Beat. The 2024 total solar eclipse is now just days away. For local organizations that run group homes and provide support to people with disabilities living independently, the eclipse has proved unique to plan for. I spoke with Thomas S., People Inc. Senior Vice President for Emergency Management, about how the eclipse will impact the homes many people with intellectual and developmental disabilities live in. Here's part of that interview. We've taken a pretty aggressive approach here, um, knowing that there's a real potential for issues with transportation, um, especially given the schedule that we have. So we serve people in a day program setting, um, and it just so happens that the time when they would be leaving to go home is the exact time when the eclipse is occurring. So we've chose to uh, close our day programs for the day. Um, and have people, you know, be able to be at home and watch the eclipse there. You know, just the thought of, you know, being delayed for a long period of time was was going to be an issue. We did that with our respites as well. So because a lot of schools are closed, our respite programs are afternoon respites. So it's the time after school until, you know, maybe mom or dad can come pick up their son or daughter. Those are closed as well because schools are closed. We've also closed our administrative buildings just because we felt it was appropriate to let people you know, do what they can at home for work, um, and then, you know, enjoy it however they might want to. Have you had to modify staffing at all for your agency? Obviously, a lot of people will be home from work, but in settings like group homes where people have to be in person for that work, how is that working out? Like, is that changing shifts at all? Yeah, so we're actually um, having the people that work in our day program detail into our residential sites to help cover the fact that there's going to be you know, people home when they normally wouldn't be, and we don't usually account for that staffing. Um, We're also having our afternoon staff report at noon because our shift change is also at three o'clock, which is again in the middle of the eclipse. So we are, you know, preparing for that as well as um, offering an incentive for, you know, holiday pay almost. We're we're paying time and a half because we want to make sure we have enough staffing. What are some of the challenges of communicating to people how this is going to impact their day? Because I know for a lot of people with disabilities, routine is very important, especially for people with intellectual or cognitive disabilities, like disruption and routine can be a big deal. A couple of things. We try to treat it just like a holiday. So that's kind of what we're doing now. And, and what you do with a holiday is kind of talk about it ahead of time. Uh, for some people, that helps them process the information and get them prepared for what they need to experience. Some people, it's better that they don't perseverate on it. So we talk about it that day and say, this is what's happening today. And we're also working on using plain language types of uh, instruments to help educate them on this eclipse and the safety, because it is a pretty cool experience. We want to share that with them. And and using plain language helps because, you know, the, the stuff from NASA is great, but might not work for everybody. So we've been very fortunate to have some access to that that we're being able to distribute. Yeah, and for people who aren't familiar uh, with plain language, how would you describe plain language? And it sounds like there aren't a lot of materials that are in plain language on the eclipse. Yeah, it was actually, we're very fortunate. Erie County helped develop some plain language. We worked on some as well in, in-house with our advocates. Plain language essentially provides a, a way of speaking that might be a little more on a simple term, uh, helping to describe things without using large vocabulary that might be confusing or otherwise not able to be read. So, you know, when you're talking about some documents that NASA is producing, they did produce it in English and Spanish, which is great, but some of the words they use can be intimidating, right? And it's a lot of text in a small space. Uh, That's also a lot of it too, is just the accessibility of it. Um, Being able to, you know, read along easily can be difficult for some of our folks. So plain language goes along with both the content, but also the way it's accessed. So it might be a little larger print spaced out a little bit different things like that. What do you think companies and organizations could do better to communicate emergencies or large scale events like this to people with intellectual or developmental disabilities? Yeah, I think it's always a challenge to when we're communicating in any emergency environment, because really it comes down to preparation, right? Because when it's happening, it's too late, right? So I think um, what all organizations have been striving to do, and I think 
really the snowstorms this past 2023 and 2022 really did prove to us that we need to be doing the best we can with that and preparing people for the fact that they might not have help and that they need to find a circle of support that's even closer um, because you know those are very real possibilities in our area that um, snowstorms will cut off your ability to have staff come and uh, provide the assistance needed so a lot of what we've been working on is making sure people are prepared with their own plans ahead of time so that's the type of communication that needs to happen ahead of time uh, with this it's more about making sure that people are engaged and have a, a connection with someone or you know some organization perhaps that is is there and, and is thinking about these things to talk with them about it and what are some ways that disability organizations like yours could be better supported in future eclipse? Obviously, the next total solar eclipse won't happen in Buffalo for a very long time, but what are the lessons learned here that could help future areas? Yeah, I think, um, honestly, they've done a fantastic job, and I think it does help when we have this amount of time and the amount of preparation that went in. So very small list of things that would be on my uh, concerns that we didn't get support. Um, obviously, financial support would be great to, to be able to help pay for, you know, staffing uh, with the, you know, uh, you know, increased costs and things like that. But uh, honestly, I think the plain language piece was addressed. And I think that's a, a, a really a, a sign to me that we are moving in the right direction. That's great to hear. And do you have any advice for people with disabilities watching the eclipse that you've learned through this process? Sure. I think um, the most important thing is to know when it's going to happen, right? It's it's a pretty spelled out for our area. It's going to be around starting around 2.05 p.m. and go till about 4.30 with the main part of the eclipse being about four minutes around 3.18 p.m. Um, the key is making sure you have your glasses. You got to have them on the whole time, even during the partial phase. So that would be, you know, for everyone, not just people with uh, a developmental disability or any disability. But I think the other piece is, is make sure you're there a little bit ahead of time. Um, give yourself adequate amount of time to get to where you need to be, because it's not going to be um, necessarily easy to go where you think. Parks are going to be really busy. You know, it might be better just in your backyard if you're a local right so um, there's a lot of opportunities though and a lot of cool things going on so if you want to do those those are great but plan ahead to listen to the disabilities beat segment on demand view a transcript plain language description and learn more about the eclipse visit our website at wbfo.org i'm emily watkins thanks for listening